Bibliophiles of the internet, today I'm back to haul some books. It's been a while since I've shown you which books I've acquired as of late, so I figured I would curate a small selection of titles I've recently received, pre-ordered, or bought, and just shared them with you in case you want to add them to your list. As I just implied, this is not everything I've acquired in the year 2022, but I thought I would highlight some possibly lesser known titles and also just books I'm really excited about. So let's get started. Starting off strong, we have The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Lord. I got this on Angela's recommendation, as you may have guessed, because she pitched it as a social, soft, optimistic sci-fi perfect for fans of Becky Chambers. And that's really all I needed to hear. It's about this alien society that suffers an unprovoked attack, and it leaves them with no choice but to reach out to the indigenous humanoids of this world, whom they are very distantly related but also very much at odds with. So it follows two characters from these two clashing societies who are forced to work together, and they uncover some ancient mysteries that could very well have some far-reaching consequences. Next, I want to spotlight The Best Liars in Riverview by Lynn Thompson. This is a queer middle grade book that was blurbed and recommended by Lisa Jen Bigelow, AJ Sass, and Ashley Herring Blake, three of my favorite queer middle grade authors. It follows a non-binary main character named Aubrey, whose best friend Joel mysteriously disappears. Aubrey was the last person to see Joel, so the entire town is basically turning to them for answers that they don't have. But a secret that they're holding onto is that they built a raft with Joel that they kept hidden in the woods, which is now gone as well. So they may not know where Joel went, but perhaps Aubrey knows how to find him and also what caused all of this. Next, we have Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. This was kindly sent to me by Penguin because they saw that I really enjoyed Confessions of the Fox by Jordi Rosenberg, and I guess Jordi Rosenberg blurbed this book, and they figured by transitive property that I would enjoy it as well. It's a queer contemporary story about a trans archivist named Soul who's living with an illness known as vampirism, where he basically hides from the sun by living in his basement office. He meets a widow named Elise who came to donate her late famous wife's papers, and they instantly connect over their shared experiences with grief, internet fandom, transphobia, and the stigma of living with the quote-unquote vampire disease. Casey McQuiston also wrote an article about this book for the New York Times, which I will link down below, but that also definitely piqued my interest. I have read and reviewed this next book before, but it is so beautiful and so wonderful that I had to share it again, and that is So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. This is F.T. Lukens' latest queer satirical fantasy story that takes place after the hero and his ragtag team of compatriots have successfully completed their epic quest. After vanquishing and unseating a corrupt usurper, Arik decides to name himself as King, as a placeholder of sorts while they try to find a better monarch. But little does he know, there's a magical binding spell that makes it so that anyone who sits on the throne will have to be soul bonded to another person within a certain amount of days. With the clock ticking, Arik decides the most effective way to find his soulmate would be to woo all of his closest friends and see if anything sticks, but totally not because he has a not-so-secret crush on his mage and best friend, Matt. At this point, I am all but begging every single one of you to please, please read this book. Next, I want to talk about Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin. I saw this book all over Bookstagram and social media, and it wasn't until I saw someone recommending it on TikTok that I learned it was a gritty horror story about trans rage. And that's really all you need to say to get me to read a book. It's a queer post-apocalyptic horror story, as I said, where some kind of disease has made men feral, and the main characters spend their days hunting feral men and harvesting their organs so that they don't meet the same fate. So it's basically this found family of survivors trying to navigate danger and turfs and awkward relationships dynamics, and it's supposed to be a sort of response to all those gender-based apocalyptic stories that fail to consider the fact that trans and non-binary people exist. This next one is a little bit of a flex, but I have to share it, and that is this bound manuscript of Andre and Santi Were Here by Johnny Casavia. This doesn't come out until 2023. It is not an arc. It is a bound manuscript, as I said, but I'm super psyched about it. It's a queer contemporary story about two non-binary Latina characters who fall in love in a taqueria, which is everything I want in life. The story is about Ander who takes a gap year to paint murals and ends up getting fired from the family taqueria, but they end up connecting with Santi, the Mexican waiter who actually was hired in their place. It's taken a tremendous amount of self-restraint to not read this immediately, but I do intend to read it by June at the absolute latest. Next, I simply have to talk about A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. This is an arc. It comes out on May 24th. It's a queer historical romance with a trans woman as the romantic heroine. The story follows Viola, who went off to war with her best friend Gracewood, and when she was presumed dead after battle, she takes that as an opportunity to escape, transition, and live her life as the woman she's always known herself to be. Many years later, 
year, she hears about the Duke, Gracewood, who has fallen into grief and despair after losing his best friend. So Viola's sister-in-law comes up with a scheme to go visit Gracewood under the guise of helping his younger sister debut in society and kick off her season, but it's really a chance for Viola to reconnect with her best friend and first love as the person she truly is. You're gonna see me violently emoting over this book in my next wrap-up, so I won't say much, but I'm very glad it exists. Around the same time, I was on a queer historical kick and I picked up Unmasked by the Marquess by Cat Sebastian. I want to read more of Cat Sebastian's backlist and this one is super high on my list. It's a queer historical romance about Robert who is determined to see his sister make an advantageous match. But there are two problems. First, their family has no money and no connections and also Robert is actually a housemaid named Charity Church. She's been disguising herself for six years trying to help her best friend get a leg up in society but she knows her masquerade is coming to an end. So Charity, as Robert, goes to besiege the favor of Alistair, the Marcus of Pembroke, whose sole concern has been repairing his ruined estate and protecting the family fortune. But now he finds himself entertaining the idea of doing disreputable things with this mysterious young scamp who showed up at his doorstep. First of all, I love that these two are going to fall for each other as men, but I've also heard this story potentially explore some gender feels as well, which is really exciting. Then I pre-ordered The Romantic Agenda by Claire Kahn. Claire Kahn is the author of Let's Talk About Love, one of my favorite books, and this is yet another asexual romance. It's about a black ace main character named Joy who's secretly in love with her best friend Malcolm, but she's way too scared to do anything about it. When Malcolm invites Joy on a weekend getaway, she figures now's the time to show him what he's missing. So when she runs into, I believe her ex named Fox, he agrees to help make Malcolm jealous by pretending to date Joy. And I think we can guess where it goes from there. Then because it was my Patreon pick for April, I picked up a copy of The Last Cuentista by Dana Barba Higuera. This was published last year by Levin Querido, who in full transparency did send me an arc that I didn't get a chance to read, but it's won pretty much every single major award since its release. This is a Latina story for young readers. I'm not sure whether it's YA or middle grade, but it's a sci-fi story about how Earth has been destroyed by a comet and only a few hundred scientists and their families have been chosen to journey to a new planet. Petra is one of the few lucky ones, and after a hundred year journey, she wakes up to this new planet and finds that she is the only human who remembers Earth. Turns out a sinister collective has taken over the ship and is systemically destroying everyone's memories of the past. So now it's up to Petra to protect those stories and see if she can find a way to bring them back to life. Next is one of my most anticipated releases, and that is Different Kinds of Fruit by Kyle Lukoff. Kyle Lukoff is the Stonewall Award-winning author of Too Bright to See, one of my favorite books of 2021, and this is his latest queer middle-grade story about Annabelle, who's used to having the same old teachers and classmates and routines, which is why she's really excited when a new kid moves into town and they become friends. Bailey, the new kid, is non-binary, and Annabelle thinks they're really exciting and interesting and possibly even cute. And her dad sees this new friendship as an opportunity to share that he's also trans, which throws Bailey's family into a completely new light. And I think the story is just about navigating that, learning how to support each other and be there for each other, and if Too Bright to See is any indication, I think it's gonna be fantastic. Then because I'm technically one of their ambassadors, even though I always forget for some reason, Avon sent me a finished copy of Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. This is an adult romance which people seem to be really enjoying, and it's about Karina who dreams about having a love story like her parents, but she just can't find it. When she learns that her father is selling her mother's home, she makes a deal with him that he will give her the house if she can get herself engaged in four months. At the same time, Dr. Prem is trying to build a community health center, but he needs donors with really deep pockets to make it happen. When he gets in a televised argument with Karina on his talk show, the interaction goes viral, and Karina's meddling auntie step in to propose that if he can convince Karina that he's her soulmate, they will fund the clinic themselves. So it's sort of a twist on an arranged match, and the more time Karina and Prem spend together, the more they might just have to admit that hate has turned into fate. And the most recent book I picked up was It's the End of the World and I'm in My Bathing Suit by Justin A. Reynolds. This is a cheeky middle grade book about an all black cast of characters that takes place at the end of the world. It all starts with Eddie who absolutely hates doing laundry and has let it build up until he has nothing left to wear. And when he finally puts a load in the washer, the power goes out. Dressed in his glow in the dark swim trunks, Eddie goes outside to investigate what's happening and runs into a bunch of other kids who were also in the middle of doing really important things when the power got cut. Slowly they realize that the adult are not coming back anytime soon, and they might not just be the only people left in their neighborhood, but also in the entire world. This sounds super fun and mysterious and entertaining, and I can't wait to read it. So there you have it. Those are a handful of books that have recently come into my life. In the comments down below, let me know if you've read any of these yourself, or if you plan to, or let me know which books you've acquired recently yourself. But that is everything I had to share for this book haul today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, educate yourself, be kind to yourself, take care of yourself, and I'll catch you on the flip side of the page.